Hello everyone and welcome to my first video. Here you can see I am lining out my drawing, adding a grid so I can make sure that I get my proportions correct. Please excuse the poor quality. I will eventually have better equipment and a better setting. Getting your grid correct is uh, very important. You have to make sure that the sizes from your reference photo match up with the sizes of the piece you're going to be working on. Here I've doubled it. Um, so one, one inch by one inch square on my reference photo and I'm doubling it up to two inch by two inch on my paper. can be very confusing for me. I'm not very good at math. <laughs> there we have it, our first session. Here we go, session number two. I'm going to start the line drawing. This is the most important part. If you don't get your proportions correct, your drawing will not come out at all. <clears throat> If you have to, you can start a little bit of shading as you go, but you don't want to do too much, otherwise it'll be hard to erase. I go square by square and make sure that I follow where everything starts in the square and ends in the square. I don't focus on the drawing as a whole, or the picture as a whole, I focus on each square and then I move on and back up and focus on it as a whole to make sure I've gotten it correct. I also, my printer does not print very clear, so I try and pull my reference photo up on my old phone and zoom in where I need extra details. Eyes can be rather tricky also. Even if you have your squares, they can be, in this case, they're fairly tiny inside my squares. So if you need, you can always add um, a whole smaller grid inside your squares. Um, in this case, I would, if I were going to do that, I would do like a quarter inch by quarter inch squares inside the squares that just go over his eyes and then of course it would be half inch by half inch squares um, on my bigger on the piece that I'm actually drawing and then I could follow the size of his eyes better um, I'm getting better at um, just looking at the photo and figuring out the size so I didn't need to do that on this one you can see my kids coming in and bothering me throughout the day as they work. They're lovely though. And here you can see I'm going to start, um, well I've already started to darken in some of my defining lines. I'm going to add shading as I go. And I'm going to pay real close attention to the lightest spots. I want to try and avoid um, shading those spots until I'm ready to shade them. Um, I don't want to put too much over them because I don't want it to get muddy looking. You can always erase, but it doesn't always erase as clear as you want it to. So I try and make sure that I'm keeping those lighter highlights um, as light as possible. Um, I'm starting the facial hair a little bit here. I'll, I'll start it and then I'll move on for a while. Um, and the nose, never, um, never draw your nose. <laughs> 
that it's always almost just shading around it. The nose has very soft lines except around the nostrils, almost always. Um, unless someone has a scar, or I don't know. Uh, I've never really seen hard lines around a nose. Um, you can see my darkest areas are just dark shading. Um, and that's what defines the nose. More facial hair. Um, hair is built in layers. So you'll see me come in and um, I prefer to start from a white background. Uh, some people will shade first. If I have white or gray hairs, I prefer to keep it white and then put my darkest spots. And then that's where you kind of get the feel of the hair. You want to do it in patches, too, not drawing every single hair. You'll see me come in and shade, and then erase, and shade, and then erase, and define little hairs. And Here I'm working on the eyes, and you need to definitely remember that um, the lightest part or the whitest part of the eye is always going to be the... The highlight, not um, the reflection, not the white of the eye. The white of the eye is almost always a gray color. Um, when you're looking at a picture or looking at somebody in real life, there's always shading because of your eyelids and eyelashes. Ears can be a little tough. Um, focus on the darker spots and... Um, Build them up, and then your lighter spots will pop out. Be sure you shade and pay attention to to just to <laughs> the ear overall. After you've really focused on the parts that don't look like your ear, um, wrinkles can be tough. Uh, they can seem rather daunting sometimes. Um, here, I've, I've had them too dark, and um, you'll see later on that I take pictures, and that's how I uh, that's how I check up on my work. How I I double check it with my reference photo, and um, you'll see me come back in and lighten these wrinkles. I was seeing them as black for some reason. Um, but a wrinkle, the light is going to catch it, usually on the top part of the wrinkle. And then where the skin is folding over, you're going to have a defining line. But it's not going to be a super hard defining line. It's going to be a mixture of hard and soft, if that makes any sense. Um, you're going to use your shading tool to pull some of that line and put a softer edge on it. Here we are with the hair again. We're gonna, well, we're just beginning the hair. Um, you're gonna draw, shade, erase, define little hairs, then draw, shade, and erase. Um, when I'm erasing here, all this hair is short, so I'm just doing little strokes, and I've used a razor to to cut my little eraser tool to make a fine line. Um, I've yet to find an eraser that is skinny enough to make me happy for um, doing hair, so I just modify mine. Working on the facial hair, again, these are really, these got fairly long. Uh, mustache compared to what some men have um, but again the hair is still relatively short so really short strokes and you want to get do it in patches not trying to draw individual hairs um, you 
want to get, make sure you have the feel of how his mustache actually looks. Um, here it's far from being done, of course, but you can see the dark spots, the darkest spots are kind of matching up with the darkest spots on my reference photo. Um, and little highlights, those are things you recognize about people and what helps make a picture look like somebody. Here my um, camera had gotten moved and I didn't realize, so you can see me, there I am, in my lovely summer dress. <laughs> I'm gonna work on the lips here in a minute, and lips can be tough for me. Um, I have a tendency to want to draw cartoon lips. Um, when you really look at lips, when you're drawing lips, you draw, it doesn't look like lips. Um, you draw all these little lines that have nothing to do with what lips look like in your mind. and But then with the right shading, all of a sudden they become lips. Rather amazing, I would say. Um, <laughs> I love the, his hair behind him, blowing in the wind. Um, I have several different erasers. You can never have enough erasers. Um, if you're doing lots of graphite work, an eraser, the right eraser, can almost make or break your drawing. Um, I have a native eraser, which I use more for just blotching out or creating um, textures, different textures. And then for all my fine lines, I really like a good sturdy eraser. <laughs> so. Um, the plastic, that piece of plastic is going to help keep everything from smudging. Um, graphite's very soft and will smudge if you run your hand across it. Uh, you can ruin the light if you need a part of your drawing is light and you smear your <laughs> graphite across it. It can not ruin your whole drawing, but it can really be a bummer. Um, it can be really hard to fix. Again, more facial hair. I can't stress enough, it's layers. Layers upon layers. Draw, shade, erase, define, and repeat. And when it starts to look like hair, you're still not done. <laughs> you're like another two layers past what you think is done. Remember, every drawing has an ugly stage. Um, you can, oh, number six got deleted, unfortunately. Here, um, there's not a whole lot here to see in this last little clip, but um, I am working on his bandana and his collar, uh, little finishing details. Um, clothes are not my favorite to draw. I don't mind like a shirt, but this, his shirt has um, lines, and I am not a big fan of repeating patterns or straight lines, or lines that appear to be straight. I find it too tedious for my mind, but I will still do it if it makes my drawing, so. You can see me... Um, rubbing off some of the graphite on my shader tool. For the background at the top, I'm only going to use my shader tool. And um, I want it to be light enough, so I'll double check and triple check. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.